Hi, so let's look at these problems, especially problem four, and see what we can do. So the first thing you do when you look at this problem is you look at it and say, what is this problem even about? So you see, you're designing a new role-playing game. Your eccentric uh, colleague comes to you with an idea for a key scene. Fine. The backstory is that the mortal Orpheus wants to gain knowledge of the dates, so he wants to know about dates of certain key events in the year to come. And these are called the prophecies of interest. Okay, so this is what he wants to know. He wants to know these prophecies of interest. And he's heard that in the halls of time these things are known, so he quests to the underworld till he gets there. In the halls of time he encounters the guard guardians, and they have access to the knowledge of the fates. So this is what we know about the problem so far. Then let's read about what actually the problem part A is asking. It says that the big game behaves as follows. There are 12 guardians, and each knows all the prophecies. And they're a bit odd, though. Half of them are honest, so make a little note to ourselves that says six honest. And it says that they answer questions posed to them exactly. One quarter of them consider mortals to be beneath them, and we'll say begone mortal. So there's three begone type guardians. And one quarter despise mortals and will answer maliciously. Okay, so this word maliciously is nice because it finally connects to something that we've seen in the class before, um, the idea of malicious errors. Okay, so we have 12 total, six are honest, three just don't answer, and three are malicious. So the question is, does Orpheus know who he's talking to? And the answer is no, Orpheus doesn't know who he's talking to. So Orpheus gets somehow 12 questions that he asks answered, and six of them will be honest, three will be be gone, and three will be wrong, and he won't know which ones are honest and which ones are malicious. But he'll know which ones are be gone. So furthermore, the question says he can only ask questions whose answer is a number, And so now we are faced with a challenge, right? We're wondering, well, what he wants to know are dates, and he can only ask questions with answers a number. So that's where this hint comes in. The hint says, you can ask them to encode a prophecy of interest as follows, 1 to 365 for the days in the coming year, 0 for the past, 366 to represent the future, and great. So now we can represent time as a number. And it says, fortunately, 367 happens to be prime. That's another hint, right? It's telling us, wait, okay, so I've seen malicious, so there's some kind of errors here that are going to be arbitrarily bad as well. There's some prime numbers going on. So it's telling us roughly, you know, what should we be thinking about? What tools might we want to use to solve this problem? So this wasn't in the midterm, but in the homework, we added this extra line here that says the prophecy wants or answers to questions like, when will my wife die? So this says you, know, you can turn these into a number. So now the restrictions in the problem become a little clearer. He can only ask any individual guardian one question. After that, he'll magically disappear. And he has to ask 12 questions to 12 different guardians. And now here's the actual problem. How many prophecies can Orpheus reliably extract? Then we have to answer how can he do it and why will this work? So the first thing you think about is, well, what can we possibly use to answer this question? And immediately an idea comes to your mind, just because of the word malicious and the fact that you have to figure out the answer to some questions. So somehow we want to use read Solomon codes. So we want to use read Solomon code ideas. We know that. But we have a problem. Read Solomon codes, as we studied them, involve us encoding the messages of interest at the encoder into a polynomial, and then evaluating that polynomial at certain points, and then transmitting them through the potentially noisy channel. 
And then the receiver, uh, it doesn't know the, what these polynomial points are, he has to figure out which polynomial was sent. So the first thing we have to understand is, what is the position of Orpheus? Orpheus doesn't know the information he wants to know. So in this sense, Orpheus is the receiver. He's going to get the answers to the questions. So if Orpheus is the receiver, then who's the transmitter? Who's the one who's going to be saying something, who has access to knowledge? Well, the combination of the transmitter and the channel is somehow associated with the guardians. But at first glance, we're not exactly sure how this would work. It's totally natural to be very confused at this point in terms of how exactly we're we supposed to ask these questions. But maybe we can skip ahead. Maybe we don't need to know how exactly we're going to ask the questions before we can start answering this question. At some point, we're going to get six correct answers. and three wrong ones. The three begones are essentially like they're not even there, because we know that there are going to be begones. So we have six correct answers and three wrong ones. So if we think about the Reed-Solomon idea, we can ask, well, how many pieces of information can we extract with, from six correct answers and three wrong ones? And the basic principle is every wrong answer cancels one correct answer. right? That's the way that it works in the Reed-Solomon uh, constructions. And just to rem remind you, you know this works because if you think about the simple case of asking one question over and over again, if you ask it to two guardians, one question, and one of them lies, well, you're going to have one right answer and one wrong answer. And you won't know which one is right or wrong. So you can't actually recover. So it's like having almost like having nothing at all. So in this case, if you have three and only one of them lied, we'll then have two that are the right one, the correct answer, and one that's wrong. And so it's pretty clear by looking at the majority, you can figure out which one is right. So this justifies our intuitive sense, which is also in the notes, that the way it works in Reed-Solomon codes is every wrong answer cancels effectively one correct answer. So that says we can recover. Six minus three equals three prophecies. So notice what's happened here. We've actually figured out the answer to this question in terms of the number without really understanding how to do it yet. And that's fine, right? We're building towards explaining why this actually works. That's why the question is ordered this way. First ask how many prophecies can you extract, then how can you do it, and then why will it work? So now, when we think about it, we have to ask, OK, how do we actually extract the information? How do we actually get, how do we actually use the Reed-Solomon code ideas? So the key trick here is to figure out a way that the guardians will give answers that are like the evaluations of a polynomial at a point. So we can just make a little note of this to ourselves. Need guardians to answer P of I, where P of I is the polynomial of interest. So, so far, we're, we're trying to push things off, right? We don't know exactly how to ask these questions, but we know if we're going to use Reed-Solomon code ideas that the answers the guardians give have to be the evaluations of the polynomial. So we know we want the guardians to answer evaluations of the polynomial. So if we knew what the polynomial was, we could just ask the guardians to do arithmetic for us and say, hey, guardian number one, please calculate one plus seven, for example. Well, OK, we could do that. But Orpheus can do arithmetic just as fine himself. So it doesn't make sense to ask the guardians a question, which is merely a question of arithmetic. 
it has to somehow use the information the Guardians have that Orpheus doesn't have. So how can Orpheus do this? Well, this is where we can go back and look at this hint. The hint tells us that we can ask the Guardians to encode information into numbers. So we can ask the Guardians a question like this. Please encode the first prophecy date into P0 using the hint. This is just a matter of makes it easier for us to write it. Second prophecy date into P1, and the third date into P2. So we can tell the Guardian to do this, and then we can ask him a question. Tell Guardian I to say, please tell me what is, now we have to ask for an evaluation of a polynomial. So how do we ask for the evaluation of a polynomial? We can just ask, well, what is P0 plus P1 times I plus P2 times I squared mod 367. So notice now we have an exact question. We ask the question to the guardian, it's a compound question, please encode the first prophecy's date into P0 using the hint, second prophecy's date into P1, third pro prophecy's date into P2, and then, please guardian, please tell me what is P0 plus P1 times I plus P2 times I squared mod 367. And so you ask guardian I this question. So you choose one guardian, you call him guardian one, call him another one guardian two, another guardian three. So we can say, sign guardians numbers from one, two, three, all the way up to 12. So we have to check, are one through 12 within the finite field of interest? Yes, they are. They're all, they all fit within 367. At this point, at this point, this is exactly like Reed Solomon. And the Reed Solomon decoding algorithm will correctly reconstruct the polynomial. So Let's see, have we answered the question? How many prophecies can Orpheus reliably extract from the 12 guardians? Yes, we've answered that part. The answer is three, if we could use Reed Solomon ideas. How can he do it? He can do it by asking questions of this form, which forces guardian I to return a polynomial evaluation. The honest ones will answer correctly. The dishonest ones will lie maliciously, but that's exactly the scenario that Reed Solomon codes are meant to handle. Why will this work? You know, this works. since Reed Solomon works. Now you don't have to prove on the midterm or in the homework why Reed Solomon works. That's already in the notes. In general, we're not going to ask you to do something that's exactly like the notes. Just regurgitate something from the notes. 
So this is actually a good enough answer and gives you full credit on this question.